Hello, we have a very unexpected guest today. This is Eric from the editor team. Say hi. Hi. <laughs> and we're going to talk about your box, your features, and our fixes or their fixes. And if you watch this long enough, we're going to talk about editor extensions, so don't switch off. The main thing why I brought you here today is that I noticed that sometimes from bug report to we shipped it, it can be like 15 minutes. <laughs> I mean, I've seen that. Like yeah. a person report the bug in the chat and in 15 minutes they're like, fix, like check out the new, the new version and this is a non-king person mm. who reported the bug. And uh, sometimes it can be a uh, week. Again, I've seen um, for a week for a feature request to get implemented, like somebody was complaining. I think it was Dima Sanikov. You're watching this. Hello, Dima. Uh, this is your bug. You reported that each time you start up the default editor, it recompiles something or reindexes something. And then in a week, they oh, yeah. pushed mm. a fix into that. But sometimes, like if we look into the issue tracker, look, page. 42 or 43, <laughs> like the bugs from 2016. 43 pages of bugs. Yeah. All right. Mm -hmm. And and can you talk a bit about prioritization? Like how come sometimes it's 15 minutes, sometimes it's two years? Yeah. First of all, we sort of have to prioritize like uh, king games and uh, also uh, indie teams games that are in production or about to release because we don't want to block anyone that's right. really. But both bugs yeah. that I mentioned were by public users. Yeah. OK. <laughs> uh, but those are sort of our top priority, yeah. things that are in production. Uh, and after that, um, we also have to think of what the engine team is doing. So if they're releasing mm -hmm. something, we need to release the corresponding functionality in the editor. So right. that, that's uh, sort of the second priority. Mm -hmm. And after that, we um, try to look at things we call blockers. And those are things that prevent you from doing your work. And there is really no workaround for it. So you come to a point where you just can't do any more work. That, uh, that thing's really okay. need to fix. Okay, these are bugs. But what about the features? The features? Yeah, <laughs> like Dimas feature that, uh, you, that it took you a week to implement. That, that's a feature. Yeah, sure. The, uh, those come more to like a gut feel of what we feel is important. It can be like a, a common annoyance or something that we feel that uh, actually things we feel a bit ashamed of that, you know, <laughs> okay. like this like this a... really ought not be this way and uh, <laughs> so we, yeah so it makes us feel a bit embarrassed uh, and this is one of those cases where uh, we feel it's it's an annoyance and uh, uh, Mats had an idea of uh, how we could fix it sort of in relatively short time mm -hmm. um, and we felt it would give a lot of value also to all our users so um, that was more of a like gut feel right. slash so embarrassing it just thing. <laughs> the start all the stars assembled yeah, like in yeah, the right yeah, position yeah, exactly. and yeah, sometimes that happens uh, and we also have those uh, in some cases we do like a rewrite of an entire system and then all of a sudden some features that we really couldn't do before <laughs> become doable yeah, easily uh, yeah okay. and uh, and then we often try to sneak one of those in and like because uh, mm -hmm. it's also a good way to test if, it's, if we did yeah. it properly. So. Yeah. Also, you work a bit differently than the engine team. They have like two sprints yeah. and like scheduled releases, and you just like done. It's up on the <laughs> server. Like take it, we take bring it. it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. We have uh, a bit of a different release uh, process, and uh, I mean one important thing to remember is that in the editor team we don't really have any QA or anything like that. So, so well, in a sense, they are the yeah, QA. <laughs> you sort of are our QA. Sorry for that. Uh, <laughs> but uh, we also have this mechanism of pushing out updates much mm -hmm. easier than. I mean, the engine team can't really push out a new engine to all the games. That wouldn't yeah. just work. Yeah. And we have this opportunity and channel. We have the infrastructure to actually push out our change. But I assume your code yeah. is heavily unit tested and you have lots of automation. It's not that like. No, no, no. It's not like we ship <laughs> out crap. I mean, yeah. uh, we do have unit tests and we have some smoke tests as well. So so every every change we do, essentially every time we merge, it goes through yeah. like unit tests and smoke yeah. tests. And if all of those pass, um, when we merge it, then it gets pushed out to all our users. Right. So, so there is testing going on still. But and also when the major, well, each 
to really cycle the read QRT right uh, test. Yeah, they are also done on the editor. Some parts of it, I guess, but um, it's mostly for yeah. testing the actual engine features. Yeah, but the project has to open, the stuff has to build, so yeah, yeah, King yeah. QA yeah. also like doing yeah. this uh, manual testing thing is. So right, and also the issue tracker for the editor is public, and it's there on the GitHub, and it's also very different from how the engine team works with a yeah. secret. <laughs> issue tracker of sorts. But what is the process if you get engine bug in here? Does it mean that you have to create a duplicate version of this bug in Jira and then whenever it gets fixed in Jira then you have to Yeah, I think the fix it engine here? team does that. Okay. Okay. Uh, Which really means that our users should report only editor issues and feature requests here. Or if it's half editor, half engine still goes here. But if it's only engine, it should go to the forum. That's my understanding. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, it's better that we get the report than no reports. I mean, if they report it here, it's not, it's not a big issue or anything. Yeah. But uh, I think going forward, uh, we will probably put, it, I mean, it, it just happens to be called editor two issues. So, I mean, we could really have a default issues <laughs> instead. So, yeah. yeah, we could so, have some issues in default. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so. what, um, what's, what's the best practice? Say, when a user wants to report a bug or request a feature, uh, do they just open, like in the editor, for example, do they do this on the GitHub? Do they go to the forum? Do they go to both places? I think it sort of depends on what they want to report. I think like pure bugs or things like that should really go into the pure bugs. Yeah, <laughs> no, I mean uh, into the GitHub issues and uh, things on the forum. I mean things that would benefit from a discussion uh, really should go to the forum. I think, um, but then it's really helpful also if you do create an issue here that you cross link so that we can check up what has been said in the forum as mm -hmm. well because it might contain clues so you don't have to repeat everything. Here uh -huh. in right. Two but to round up, so if you have something that is a major pain point, you go to the forum, you cry out loud <laughs> about it, so their team gets scared and ashamed, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> and then you also do the same report or outcry on the issues and probably interlink huh. so that. I so that uh, whoever works on this issue on the GitHub can easily go to the forum thread and vice versa. Yeah. So that makes sense, right? Yeah. So now it's time for a very sensitive question that I pre-announced on the start. The super complex question of editor extensions. I know it's just hard to open up closure to them and whoever doesn't watch this video but uses default. <laughs> Why is it so close to just open up closure? Uh, I think the reason we don't want to expose the closure uh, things that we use is that it's too complex and it's too much in flux. Like the use, like the, the technology there is complex is, yeah, or but there, the there's process really, for us? There's no like, clear cut API to expose and we don't really want, right. um, want you to accidentally use stuff that might change and break extensions afterwards. Mm -hmm. so uh, whenever you do one of these like plug-in systems or whatever, you really need to have a stable and well-tested API first. And uh, exposing the closure stuff that we use to write the editor, yeah. that's not a suitable API. Uh, so um, that's sort of the, the reason we don't want to use. Right. But closure. I know there are secret plans, top secret plans to expose uh, sort of editor plugins via Lua. At least you're talking about that. Yeah. So what are the theoretically potential options or like whatever you have on top of your head? Well, we have uh, we have done some like proof of concept things, yeah. uh, trying to embed like a Java Lua runtime in the editor, okay. and then expose an API to uh, to that Lua, sort mm -hmm. of like we do in the engine. Mm -hmm. you know, we have these mm -hmm. uh, special namespaces for yeah. stuff. Um, so that's certainly one route, and um, but also I mean. Some of the things that people want to do is basically generating files or changing files and so on. Yeah. So we could really use the file system as the API, so yeah. to speak. So at some, um, maybe make it possible to, 
uh, on some certain hooks or you know when you're building or maybe click something in a menu mm -hmm. we would just okay right. sort of launch an external process that would write stuff to the project files and then uh, we let the editor just reload those files I that see. could also be uh, one alternative so for, for certain kinds just of just a little api to catch some of the editor events and or what it could it? work in in several ways i mean we could have just the op option to launch whatever external process mm -hmm. with some arguments on certain events that might yeah. be enough for for certain kinds yeah. of extensions but if you want to do more like deep integration windows and buttons yeah, i want, yeah, I want yeah, windows and yeah, buttons. you want to do your own windows yeah. and buttons and like your own uh, scene controls and stuff like that then probably the the java lua yeah route well is the way windows to go. and buttons that's i guess <laughs> the main thing so you can build like the pipeline for your artist or for a designer hmm. and the like that's i guess or like wizards and stuff so. yeah <laughs> maybe importing pipelines so i can integrate my workflow better for example from tilet editor or from other external tool straight into into default editor Th i guess that's the main thing eh? mm, yeah that would probably be uh, we probably need some like special um, interfaces or something where you yeah. could plug in your own. I don't know really how we would uh, right. but do that. In the best this way. sounds like everything is like far, far away. Yeah. Would you would you think about something that may theoretically come this year at least? I mean, from this. If we do this really simple uh, file system as an API yeah. thing, that's uh, that's certainly like reachable. But uh, there are probably things we need to think through there as well. Yeah. Sort of what things do you really, need, what information do you still need to get from the mm -hmm. editor, uh, stuff like that. Um, I think uh, like more deep integration, uh, putting a Lua runtime or something in mm -hmm. the editor. That's probably further away because we need then we need uh, yeah. a proper API and stuff like because that. Because currently the major thing that you're working now is undo, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but that's an ounce and you know about it. Yeah. So let's wrap this up or down on this optimistic note and say thanks to Eric and to editor team for fixing bugs in 15 minutes. No. Thank you. <laughs> Cheers.